Since there seems to be some confusion on the topic, let's talk about free speech. Now, free speech, let, let's first figure out what we're talking about. First, I'm going to talk about basically the First Amendment free speech, the thing that most people are casually referencing when they talk about their freedom of speech, their free speech is being violated, right? The right to not have one's ability to speak freely imposed upon by the government. That's a very important thing to talk about there, the government. It means that the federal government can't just say, you're not allowed to talk about this particular subject. You will be arrested if you criticize the president, that sort of thing. That is what the First Amendment is preventing from happening. That is the right it is protecting. It is for you to criticize the government or to criticize other people or institutions without fear of government policing your language in that sense. That is, in essence, what that right enshrines. And it's a powerful right. It is something not enjoyed by many people across the world where incorrect criticisms of state religion or state politics or head authority figures can land you in jail for indeterminate lengths of time for beatings, indoctrination, whatever have you. So it is an important right, and that is what makes it so important that we use that right correctly and understand what it means. So, here's what it doesn't cover. It does not give you the right to be able to say literally whatever the fuck you want without consequence or repercussion. If we take it to its most basic legal principle, right? The fire in a crowded theater principle. Freedom of speech does not allow you to go into a crowded theater with limited exits and yell fire to intentionally cause a panic, which will assuredly cause at least injury, if not death. This is direct harm incited by language. And this has been long understood by the courts to be harm. Even though you didn't pull a gun on anybody, you didn't physically attack those people, your language, your words, directly caused the harm that followed. If there's a riot and a panic in that theater because you yelled fire and people are injured or killed, that is held as your responsibility because your words caused directly that action. See, there's this concept that we have understood in this society for some time that intention informs action. It's the same reason that if you were to go up to a cop and say, I'm about to rob a bank, they could detain you in that moment. They could charge you with crimes because you declared your intention to break the law actively and freely. It was not coerced. It wasn't obviously a joke. It's why talking about a bomb at the TSA is a bad idea. If someone comes up to you and threatens to kill you or attack you, isn't that already counted as verbal assault? That is already a crime on its own. And why is that a crime? Because again, the intention to cause harm is accepted as harm. It, it's not a difficult concept. And yet, we have these groups out here, <laughs> you know, anti-feminists are guilty of it, the new alt-right is very guilty of it. This uh, hiding behind this fake straw man of free speech that they have erected. These people attempt to shield themselves from the consequences of their hateful language and their harmful language with this self-righteous indignation, wrapping themselves up in this supposed freedom that they have, waving it like a flag, actually creating an idea of victimization where their inability to say their hateful things without consequence somehow victimizes them. Not the language that they're using to harm and attack other people, including calls for death, rape, and violence on other people. That's not the harm. No, no, the harm is the fact that they're being prevented from continuing to say these things in an incredibly absurd victim complex that they fully believe. It is an egregious abuse of the very concept of freedom of speech. To put it a different way, a very simple analogy, if you have your house, right? Let's say you invite, let's say a coworker, right? You invite them over to your house to get to know them better, right? They seem all right. And once they come into your house, 
they begin to ridicule something about your lifestyle. It doesn't matter, let's say you're gay, you're redneck, it doesn't even matter. Let's say they come into your house invited and they begin to belittle very important things about you or they express incredibly racist undertones immediately as soon as they walk in, just whatever have you, they're somehow immediately and directly offensive to you, right? And you say, get out of my house. Have you violated their freedom of speech? No, because this is your place. This is your house. They don't have the right to denigrate you or threaten you or abuse you. Not in your house. You don't have to give them a platform for that. You don't have to allow that. To take it to a different concept, when these, you know, alt-right people, these anti-SJW people are running around saying that when Twitter blocks them or censors them, right? <laughs> when that happens that their freedom of speech is being violated because they're not being given a platform to say their hateful, bigoted language. That becomes an attack on their freedom of speech, as they put it. But again, Twitter is not a public institution funded by the government. It is a private business in the practice of basically giving you a space in exchange for ad revenue. They want to attract more people to their business. This is simple. It's like Facebook. Facebook wants more people to be on Facebook to have eyes viewing their ads and exchanging information and drawing at more people into Facebook. It's how it makes money. It's how this whole thing works. And when you sit there with your account on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and attack a certain other base of their community, let's say you're after going after feminists, the trans community, the, you know, it doesn't matter. You're going after another whole group of people that are not being, you know, harmful or offensive themselves and are in fact just, you know, being a community on their website doing what the people intended for the website. You attack them, you say hateful things, and you start to drive people away from their service, you are no longer an asset to their business model, to put it bluntly. You are actually a detriment to their bottom line. You're driving away useful people who are using this service and can draw other people into the service to get them more money. You're, you're threatening their bottom dollar, and as a responsible corporation to profit, they need to block you or remove you to protect themselves. I would dare say they have the freedom to kick you out of their proverbial house in this case because again this is their business they made it this is not your house this is not a public sidewalk this is their business on their website that they pay for maintain and upkeep and set the rules for and if you threaten their business model by driving away people that are otherwise contributing usefully to their service, then you are a detriment and they have every right and in fact every responsibility to their business model to remove you or silence you. And if you argue against that, well, isn't that the basis of capitalism? That the business can exercise its principles in the best way for it to make its profit? Are you arguing against that because your ability to speak is so important and so petty that you need to enforce over this other idea of capitalism even, the idea of your speech being sacrosanct, that even a business has to give you a platform because you just say so? Do you have the right, let's say, to verbally assault people in like a lobby of a McDonald's? Do you have the right to, while standing in line, just start harassing and attacking people verbally as you stand in line with them? Of course you don't. You should expect to be kicked out, right? Would you expect other people to take action? Would you expect the staff to intervene, perhaps the police? Yes, well, then what gives you the right? to do that. Because here's the fundamental hypocrisy, the core nugget of fucked upness about the various groups that engage in this tactic is that what they mean when they say freedom of speech is we want the freedom to say anything while you do not have the freedom to respond. Freedom of speech for us alone. That, that, that's the little asterisk there when they say free speech is free speech asterisk this only applies to us, and if we don't like you, shut the fuck up. Because what, what is one of the first things that these people are seen doing when people disagree with them? Shutting them down, trying to shut them up, trying to silence them by any means necessary. You can be dogpiled, verbally assaulted, harassed, and attacked simply for the crime of disagreeing. And 
right afterwards. You'll find that suddenly they turn around and say, your disagreement with those tactics means you're just as bad as what you're saying they do. Where you think that our attacking them is bad, well then you're attacking us for this. That means you're just as bad as us. You're, you're trying to silence us. And it's like, no, no, no. There's a, there's a fundamental difference. It's a very easy one to pick if you weren't shoving your head up your own ass so far that you couldn't see it, which is that there's a difference between expressing your dislike of something and expressing directly harmful views. There's a difference between saying, I don't like Nazis and we should exterminate black people. There are two very different fucking meanings to these statements, and if you are pretending that they are the same thing, then you are pretending. <laughs> That's the only thing you're doing, because obviously my saying I don't like a group is completely different than saying I plan to exterminate, which complete means completely destroy this entire group of people. Again, there's something I said earlier about you know, intention informs action. If declaring that you're going to rob a bank provokes a police response before you do it, what about declaring your intention to genocide an entire race of people? Should that not provoke a response of some kind too? Because isn't the magnitude of that crime so much more vast in scope than just robbing a bank? I intend to eliminate an entire facet of the human existence from existence because I don't like it. We should treat that, I think, as at least severe as I intend to steal some money from a place. Freedom of speech protects you from the government and it protects you from general silencing. It does not protect the ability to use speech as a weapon. It does not protect people's ability to use speech to cause or incite harm. Ergo, fire in a crowded theater example. The fact that if you're advocating for genocide, quite frankly, the people you are talking about killing are put in that position where, at this point, they kind of should have the right to defend themselves from you, shouldn't they? Because you're, you want to exterminate them. Is that not a direct threat of murder against an entire people? And should it you know, again, if somebody comes up to you with a weapon and says, I'm going to kill you, does that not provoke the response before they actually take the shot or try to stab you? Don't you already move to defend yourself? Is this not really any different? Let, let's, let's stop pretending that freedom of speech is the right to say anything we want, regardless of what its impact is. Freedom of speech simply means protection from the government's intervention in your ability to say basic fundamental things. Do we really need to keep like going into this? Because these people are basically wasting our time in discussions by saying, well, this is free speech, this is free speech, and rather than like adults, we should actually be having a discussion about what we're doing about harm what we're doing about these subjects. How do we resolve the inequalities going on? Let's stop talking about free speech. We know what it means. We know what it stands for. And unless the government is sending troops to your house to silence you because you criticize the president, you're probably not having your free speech impressed upon. Of course, as a Note, this is also a point of warning for everybody. Keep in mind everything I've said about what free speech means, because with President Trump in office, keep a watch on what free speech means, and keep a mind for when people start getting arrested for criticizing the president. That is when your free speech has been impugned. That is when your free speech is violated, when the government is cracking down on criticism. When you see that, then you can talk about the impressment of your freedom of speech. And it won't be by the feminists, I assure you, but by your President Trump.